Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be setting up my bullet journal for July and let's start off right away with writing in the July title. I feel like this month's setup is more on the simplistic side, especially when compared to last month's very watercolor heavy setup. We're only going to be using colored pens and markers in this video, which saved me a lot of time. This month's theme is a dreamy pastel beach theme. I had a trip to the beach two weeks ago and another one coming up in July, so I felt like this theme was very fitting. So I'm drawing all kinds of decoration around the title. We have a little fishy at the top and a starfish here. All the colors I chose are very pastel-y with the main focus being on pinks, blues, and purple. And I will have all the different types of pens and other stationery I used listed in the description so that you can find them super easily. At the bottom here, I'm drawing a little turtle and I also love how the colors of water-based markers show up on this watercolor paper in this notebook. I raved on about how nice this paper is in my previous setup video, so I won't go on about it too much, but I just love how smooth and muted the colors look. And the reason I'm using only colored pens and markers this month is because last month I used all watercolor and when it came time to make the weekly spreads, I didn't want to take out my watercolor which made the spreads not that cohesive. So I hope that by using colored markers at the beginning of the month, my weekly spreads will be more cohesive with these spreads. For the patterns on the turtle's shell, I use a white gel pen to draw on top of the marker and I had to go over it a few times to make it opaque and then I added other decorations like bubbles and sparkles. And that is our simple cover page done. Then I moved over to the left page to set up a quote page, but I ended up hating it and will be redoing it at the end. So for now, let's move on to the monthly calendar. We're gonna start off with making decorations on this left side of the spread and I think I might not have been in the right state of mind while making this setup because I made quite a lot of mistakes and wasn't happy with a lot of things. I felt like my mind was wandering somewhere else like on the spread I initially forgot to write in the dates which is arguably the most important thing of a calendar so I don't know what's wrong with me this month maybe it's due to the lack of planning or just other things going on in my life. I drew this blue whale at the top. Well, I initially intended for it to be a whale, but I think it turned out looking more like a dolphin, which I don't really mind. You guys tell me in the comments if it looks more like a whale or a dolphin. And then we are moving on to this massive pink jellyfish. It is massive if you consider that that's the size of a whale. This jellyfish is bigger than the whale we just drew, so I don't know what kind of jellyfish this is, but it's my bullet journal, so I can do what I want. For the jellyfish's arms, I just drew wavy lines with thick and thin sections, then added more details on them with a pink sarasa clip. I added some sparkles around the jellyfish and at the bottom here we are drawing an oyster or maybe another animal, I don't know, but it has a pink heart for a pearl in the middle. I left some parts white which I think made it look more shiny and then I outlined certain parts with a sarasa clip. Thank you. 
And then we are finishing off the decorations with more bubbles and sparkles. For the headers of the days of the week, I'm making these pill-shaped boxes on top of each column using pink, blue, and purple. I'm also making two more of these header spaces for the two sections underneath the calendar, which is for the monthly focus and tasks. The task section on this page is for tasks that I just want to get done this month, but I don't have a specific date for it yet. Those tasks will live here for now, and when I set up my weeklies, I can delegate them to a specific date. And now I'm outlining the calendar grid, which I'm bringing back my disconnected lines and keeping it very simple. Last month, we colored in each box individually, which turned out super pretty, but also time consuming. Speaking of last month, if you haven't already seen last month's setup, I would really appreciate it if you do so. This channel is still relatively a small channel, so I'm very thankful for all the support and I love reading all the lovely comments you guys leave me. Then I'm using wooden stamps to stamp out the first three letters of each day and I made a mistake on Wednesday which I just used a whiteout to cover it up and once I stamped over it, the mistake was not that noticeable. I do like to leave in mistakes, one to show you that it's okay to make mistakes and also to show you how I fix certain kinds of mistakes in case you're in a similar situation to what I'm facing. And then, as I've mentioned, I forgot to write in the dates, but I do realize this mistake and we will come back to add in the dates later. But now, let's move on to my habit tracker, which might be the most minimalistic, simplistic spread in this entire setup. The way I'm tracking my habits this month is a little different, so I'm starting off with writing the title and drawing a box for each habit. The four categories I'm tracking this month are medication, diet, exercise, and reading. Then on the right side of each box, I'm writing in the mini calendar, which if you find it tedious to write in all these tiny numbers, you can always get those calendar stamps or just draw in a grid. On the left side of the boxes, I'm writing in the keys. So for example, for medication, I have a symbol for if I had my medication that day and another symbol for if I had them but not on time because there are days where I will forget to take them in the morning and I'll take them in the afternoon when I remember. So this style of tracking will definitely help me when I have my doctor visit and you can see the keys for other areas as well. Moving 
on to the right page, we have my mood tracker. So I used my stamps again to stamp out the word mood. For my mood tracker this month, I'm going to be making a little doodle for each day to represent my mood instead of coloring in sections. I really enjoy this way of mood tracking because I get to do a doodle each day and it saves time when you're initially setting it up as well because instead of drawing everything out at the beginning, you do a little bit each day and the spread fills up as you get through the month. So I picked 5 colors to draw 31 circles on this page and I did roughly sketch out the position of the circles beforehand because there were certain months where I was too lazy to sketch it out and the circle placements turn out very uneven so I'm glad I sketched it out this time. I then labeled each circle 1 to 31 and I messed up the 24th which I again covered with a white out and while waiting for that to dry, I'm drawing the seashells and starfish I'm going to be using for this month. I'm also labeling what mood each of these little doodles represent and then going back to add in the number 4 for the 24th. Then going back to the quote page, I decided to just cover this page up with a piece of paper and start again. And this time around, we're making a sunset scene, which to be honest, I still didn't love it, but I'm willing to live with it. I think I've chosen the wrong colors, the orange might have been a little too bright, and I might have made the drawing too small, so it kind of looks awkward next to the big july title on the cover page so i think throughout the month i might add stuff to this page to fill it up a little bit but for now i will just leave it as is because i don't want to deal with this quote page any longer The quote I chose for this month is romanticize your life because I think life is more fun that way and it's especially easy to romanticize your life when you're at the beach. And then finally, we're going back to the calendar page to add in all the dates. I'm making little circles in the top right corner of each box using the same 5 colors I used for the mood tracker, which I think tied the spreads nicely together. And it kind of looks like little candies spread all over the page. And then I just wrote in all the dates on top of the tiny circles. And that is it for this month's setup. So here's a final flip through of all the spreads we did today. Even though not everything went as smoothly as I wanted things to go, but I do really like the dreamy aspects of this theme. If you want to see other content from me, then make sure to go follow me on Instagram, which will be linked in the description. And also stick around here on my YouTube channel if you like my bullet journaling content, because I would love to see you in my next video as well. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Have a wonderful day or night. Bye!